Hello everyone, Jeff Stoker of Camp Fire Ministries here. I'm uh, back on YouTube again. Uh, and I'll tell you what, I'm looking around the world today, man. Things are starting to get ugly out there. Uh, you know, it's, uh, um, you see, uh, the, you see people posting about chem, chemtrails on uh, Facebook all the time and on YouTube. You see, you hear the, all the stuff going on with Obama. Man, the things are, in this world are starting to wind down, people. And it's, you know we're coming up in a time you know I think I, I believe that there's a, a strong chance that we could be is is uh, uh, somewhere around two years or, or better into the tribulation. And that being said, there needs to be an army built. It's time to build an army for God. Uh, now, granted, we can't stop the tribulation, people. There's, it's inevitable. There's nothing we can do to stop it, but we can lead others. We can expose it and, uh, and lead, lead people, still lead people to Christ during that time, all the way up to, to a certain point. But, it's, uh, but, uh, but, but folks, you know, it's, it's time to build, start building an army for these times. Uh, and that's what I'm going to you know, get into a little bit today. We're going to get into some spirit, into what the Bible says and how to, you know, how to deal in the, with the demonic forces and the spiritual realm and everything else today. So that being said, let's go ahead and open up in some prayer and we'll get started. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this day. Lord, I just want to uh, thank you again for allowing me to be on YouTube to shoot yet another video. And Lord, I just want to pray for those out there that don't know you, Lord, that they, someone comes to know you, Lord. Lord, I just want to pray that you just speak through me today as I, as I, as I read from your written word and as I, as I do this message on YouTube, Lord. Hide me behind the cross that, that your light may shine, Lord. Let me decrease so that you can increase, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, <clears throat> now, first of all, you gotta. I mean, how do you how do you build an army for Christ? How do you do that? How do you build an army of faith? Now, see, the arm, the type of army I'm talking about is not, you don't, they don't use weapons like guns and bazookas and nukes and stuff like that like the world does. We use much better. We attack the uh, the enemy at its source. We go straight to the enemy. See, the enemy is not people. Because see, God told us to love our, our our enemy like we love ourselves. Why did He tell us that? Because our enemy is not is not the person sitting beside you. It's not the person across the street. Our true enemy is Satan. So how do you battle Satan? How do you build an army to battle Satan? Well, that's simple. Go ahead and turn with me to Mark. Uh, starting, uh, let's go to Mark 16, verse 15. Okay, um, and it says, Go you into, uh, starting at um, verse 15, and it says, and this is G Jesus spoken, uh, and he said, um, Go you into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's how you build your army, by preaching the gospel. Uh, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Okay, so, you know, you go and to tell somebody about Christ, and they just refuse to b believe, and they're judged already, and just leave them be, go on to the next person. Okay, and this is how you build an army for Christ. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Now, now on 18, where it says they shall take up serpents and drink any deadly thing, does, that does not mean intentionally go and grab a serpent, you know, grab a snake, and you know, and just just be grabbing it like you see a lot of these snake handlers up in up in Kentucky and you know, in in Tennessee and places like that doing. Okay, <clears throat> that's um, uh, um, that means if you if you know if 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 you see somebody about to get bit by a snake and you grab it, you won't you won't get you won't get hurt. Or if you if you're climbing a mountain and accidentally grab a snake, it won't bite you. Uh, also, in the, the drinking deadly things, what that falls into is if somebody tries to poison you, that don't mean take arsenic or cyanide or something and just pour it straight into into a glass and try to drink it. And then it, it, it means if someone is intentionally trying to poison you, not you you trying to drink poison. Then it'll, it'll it'll it won't it won't harm you. It shall not hurt hurt them. Uh, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. These are signs that will follow those that are serving Christ. But how does this tie now? What you know, it's, uh, so so now how does this tie into uh, the, the spiritual warfare? Well, what does Satan come to do? He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So if you're standing up, you're laying hands on the sick, and you're casting out devils, and and and, and you know laying hands on the sick and stopping what the devil inflicted on somebody then you're in spiritual warfare okay now one thing you gotta remember when you uh, in spiritual warfare you don't wrestle against flesh and blood let's take a look at Ephesians 6 uh, starting at verse 10 and uh, let's take a look at uh, 
how how we go into battle once we once we build this army. And uh, if you look at that, it talks about the. If you look at Ephesians six six ten uh, on, it talks about the uh, the the army of God. And uh, and my U version just crashed. So hold on, just one second. Let me get and grab my paper Bible here. <coughs> And uh, this is a good thing I got a paper Bible as well right here, because uh, my uh, wait it might be coming back trying to come back up now. Let's see. But Ephesians six ten. I'm gonna go ahead and turn to it in my paper Bible. Yeah, here we go. It came up for me. Good. Okay, if you go in Ephesians uh, six and start at verse ten, it reads, "Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and 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 in the power of His might." Put on the whole armor of God that you may not be that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. <laughs> so if you have the armor ar armor of God, uh, if you have the armor of God, then the devil won't be able to penetrate that armor because it's a it's a supernatural armor that he cannot penetrate. And the only defense you have is through Christ. Um, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, against principalities. Uh, and against the rulers of darkness of this world, and against the spiritual wickedness in high places. Okay, how many people realize that the powers and principalities are is uh, what that is? That's ranks of demons. For we wrestle against uh, not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. That's like a that's like a that would be like a, the the spirit of pride ruling over uh, insecurity, inferiority, and against the powers. That'd be inferiority ruling over. Um, uh, other other things you know, over fear and, and such and against the rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places wherefore take you unto the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day having done all to stand stand therefore having your loins girded about with truth having your breastplate plate of righteousness so you know, stand therefore having your loins girded about with truth that means you need to speak the truth as much as you pos human, humanly possible and then leave the results up to God. Having the breastplate of righteousness. Stand righteous. The only way you can be seen as righteous through, uh, by God is through Christ. Remember that. And all your feet shroud with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith. This is an important one, people. Take the shield of faith. Faith is what's, what protects your spirit. That gets you through a lot of stuff. <laughs> Uh, praying always, uh, uh, shield of faith, where, wherewith you shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. And uh, see, you know, if you want to step in this army of God, you've got to have faith, people. I mean, it's, uh, you know, you, you think about the the Jericho, where the you know, where the army, uh, the, where the, when walls came down, where the, the that army marched around that walls seven times, and they blew the shofar, and those walls come and t come tumbling down. That wasn't by their own might, people. That was by, by faith they did that. It was by faith that, 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 that Moses was able to face God and, and bring the Ten Commandments down. It was by faith that the, dead, that the Red Sea part, uh, parted when, uh, when, uh, when, as Moses, when God told Moses to command it. And it was by faith that, that the blind saw when Jesus healed them. It was by faith that all this stuff happens. And people, we need to build an army of faith today, Lord. So that, the, so that the Lord can work. You want to see works in the United States? You want to see the United States that have even a stand even a chance of going back to where it goes, goes to? we got to build an army. Now, granted, I don't think it will because of, because of the time that we're living in, but at least we, we can build an army that they can go out and lead as many as we can to Christ before, before His return, which means there's going to be that, that, that many people that don't have to worry about going to hell. Okay, <clears throat> and uh, now moving right along, uh, praying always with prayer and supplication in spirit and watching thereunto uh, with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's what spiritual warfare is all about. You want to see what spiritual warfare is all about? Just read the book of Ephesians. It's a good book for, especially Ephesians six. It's uh, and it gets right into it. Now I'm here to build an army, people. I'm, I'm here to stand for Christ. And my goal is, is to build an army for Jesus. How many of y'all out there would like to fight for Jesus? How many want to stand up for for the for freedom from sin, for freedom to to to, to be able to go to heaven, for freedom uh, uh, away from uh, from from the new world order and the and the and the, their tyranny? 
Now we can't stop the New World Order, but we can resist it. We cannot stop it, but we can resist it. We can, and we can uh, stand up against it and expose it and lead up and, and teach others about it and, and how to how to stand against it through Jesus. So this is all stuff that's inevitable to happen. Now think about this in the timeline that that we're in. Okay, if you look at the parable of the fig tree, it says that that uh, that the uh, that that generation, when the, when the fig tree gains its leaves again, talking about Israel becoming a nation again, will not pass away before Christ comes back. That, that generation will not pass away. If you look in the book of, I believe it is uh, somewhere in Psalms, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it, it, it mentions a generation as being 70 years. Uh, which means... Okay, so that, that tells me we're very close to things really winding down. Because if you think about it, Israel became a nation again in 1948. You add 70 to 48, you tell me what you get. You get, you get 2018 in 70 years. So, so that you know, and basically says that Christ would come back before that generation ended. Think about that, folks. Time is winding down. It is time for us as Christians. This, this, this video is... For, uh, for for mostly Christians, but also if there's any non-believers watching, I'm going to get into something to help you in just a minute. But for you Christians out there, it is time to go start recruiting, leading others to Christ, and build an army for these last days. It is time to do that, people. It's time to get get off get off your butt. Stop keeping the the, the word of God behind four door behind four walls. Get off your lazy butts and get out there and start telling people about Jesus. And don't be afraid to do it. You know, you know, well, you say, well, we're going to get persecuted, we're going to get killed if we do that. Jesus himself said, if you're not, uh, if you're not willing to lay down your life for him, you're not worthy of him. If you, you know, you put mother or father before, you know, your, before Jesus, you're not worthy of Jesus. You put son or daughter before Jesus, you're not worthy of him. That he, he that does not is not willing to take up his cross and follow him is not worthy of him. So, you know, if you want to become worthy of him, then get up off, get up, and get out there and do something for Christ. Um, even do what I'm doing. Get on the, if you if you if you don't want to go out and do something, get on YouTube, make some videos, pass out tracks, do something. We need to build an army and get this stuff exposed. Have to expose evil, lead people to Christ, lead people away from evil. Yeah, you're going to get persecuted. But what does Jesus say about the persecution? Go to the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are they those who are persecuted for my name's sake. I mean, it says, I mean, it's a great honor. Stephen, uh, the first martyr. He died because he, he was sharing Jesus. You don't think God honored that? He did. He did nothing violent, but violence was put up on him. People, he got stoned to death just for simply trying to spread truth. So, and, and uh, there's not. He, you know, look at Jesus. He died on the cross. He he had no sin in him. He never killed anybody. Never told not one lie. He uh, he never hated anyone. And showed nothing but pure love. But yet he was killed on the cross. He's much better than we are. We deserve to die on the cross. So why can't we, you know, step out there and, like, like Jesus commanded and, and lay down our lives to spread the gospel of Jesus? That's what it takes to get into, into the kingdom of heaven. And that's what it, that's how hard it's how strong you got to stand, people. It's time to build an army. <clears throat> so either you're for Christ or you're against Christ. There's no two ways about it. Either you're for him or you're against him. If you're for him, then you'll stand up for him to even until your death. If you're against him, then you might as well step step on the side of, uh, of Satan and the Antichrist and, and 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 all those evil people on that side and and await your 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 judgment for that. Because folks, it's winding down. We ain't got much longer on this earth before Christ comes back. It is winding down. It's winding down fast. So the it's a uh, I mean. Uh, I can take I can take several instances and, and show you what's you know what's going on. Uh, I mean, you, you, you go back into where where the into Daniel, where it talks about where it talks about the Antichrist and it's going to come changing the laws and the times. Well, think about that scripture for a minute. That's also talking about Jesus, people. Jesus, when he came. Okay, you got the Old Covenant, which is the Old Test, uh, the Old Test. You got the Old Testament and the New Testament. Old Covenant, New Covenant. Okay, Old Testament. You know, God had a set of laws, and there ain't but one person that can change those laws and do it right, and that's God Himself. When Jesus came, 
when God came down to this earth as, as uh, in, in, in the flesh as Jesus Christ, He changed the laws, went from the old covenant that we could not follow us follow, and gave us a new covenant that gave us a way to make it to heaven through Jesus Christ. Okay, now if you if you if you research, you'll find that the Antichrist comes mimicking Jesus in many ways. I can't say he's going to do it in every way, but most of everything about the Antichrist is going to mimic Jesus. Now think about this, in the, uh, the, which means the Antichrist is going to come, come to change the laws and the times. What is Obama's message? Hope and change. What is he trying to do? Change the laws. Uh, and what did he do when he went to Israel? He went in on a symbolic donkey, just like Jesus went in, in on a donkey into, into Jerusalem. So think about it, folks. Look at the signs around you. Time is winding down. And it's, uh, and it's, um, and, uh, um, I personally think Obama's the Antichrist, but that's a personal belief. Uh, there's not, there hasn't been enough happen for me to back that up 100%. But, um, but, it, but, there's, but there has been a lot of signs that, that fit him so far. There's still a few things I'm waiting for before I can say for sure, but 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 folks, I'm just uh, but I but I am using Obama as an example because he has fulfilled a lot of stuff. I mean, I'm not saying 100% for sure that he is, but it's uh, but it's uh, I mean, personally, I think he is. But I'm not telling you to to to, to follow follow me in that area. I mean, it, you research it for yourself, and then you decide for yourself on that issue. Uh, <clears throat> but but I'm just saying that things were things were getting close. We are getting so close to Christ coming back, people. We ain't got much time. So when that time comes, if he, if Christ comes back, and you're not saved, and you're standing before that judgment throne, before that judgment seat, then it's already too late for you if you don't have Christ in your heart right now. So today is the day of salvation. Today is the day we need to start building building an army for Jesus to stand up against Satan and his uh, and his evil forces and against his demons. So today is the day that us, as, we as Christians, need to stand up and start casting, start start praying for revival. We need to start going out and witnessing to as many people as we can reach. Um, we need to go out and and, uh, and 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 pray for the sick. Go back to the to, to what what Jesus said to do. Go you into all the world, preaching the gospel in my name, making disciples. Lay hands on the sick. Cast out those demons in Jesus' name. We need to get back into spiritual warfare, practicing our authority in Christ, people, and that's in. And we need to do it stronger than ever today. And 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 for those that don't believe out there, I highly recommend you get it right today, because like I said, time is short, people. Time is short, and I can't I can't emphasize that enough. Uh, we're coming up on times where you know it's the nukes could start falling at any time. New, you know, nuclear wars, you know, can break out at any time. There's already been a nuclear blast in Damascus, which was prophesied in the Bible. Um, and I'll get into that on another video later. Okay. Now, uh, now, as far as those that don't that don't know Christ, uh, and, and I know no one wants to hear that they're going to go to hell. But if you don't have Christ, that's where you're going to go. And you ask, well, how do I get to know Christ? Well, first of all, you've got to realize you're a sinner. If you're out there and you don't know Jesus, you got to you got to stop denying that you're that something you know, that there's you know, stop denying something's wrong with you. It's wrong with everybody, and that's real clear in the Book of Romans where it says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And you say, well, I, I don't think I've sinned. Well, you know, you, 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 well, how come we can't make it to, to heaven by good works? Well, let's take a look at what what the Bible says about that. And Jesus said He sees your, your good works as filthy rags. Why does he say that? Because you got to think, you know, you know, you got to think about whose standards do you see yourself as as a good person and good enough to make it to heaven? Do you see it by you know, by man's standards? Oh, well, you know, I give to charity, I help people, and you know, I got all this money that I, you know, that I share and stuff like that. That's not what's going to get you to heaven, folks. Let's take a look at God's standards. Now you got to think, son, think about something. Have you ever told a lie? Think about this. If you ever told a lie in your entire life. If you answer yes to that, what does that make you? These are God's standards. Thou, you know, the Ten Commandments say, "Thou shalt not bear false witness." And that's you know, when you bear false witness, that's 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 another way of saying, you know, "Thou shalt not lie." Okay, so so if you if you call if you if you fly to somebody at any point in your life, what does that make you? It makes you a liar, right? Okay, have you ever have you ever stolen anything? 
most kids at some point in their life is you know at least stole you know, a dollar or two something out of their mom's purse or you know maybe they stole something a doll from you know, brother or sister or something like that stolen toys or candy from from other kids and stuff um, and even grown ups still sometimes still so if you answer yes to that what does that make you that's right that makes you a thief you know you know liars you know the bible says liars have their part in the lake of fire and thieves shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven because that only leaves only one place you can go and it's not to the kingdom of heaven here's the one that got me on, on, on that uh, have you ever committed adultery some of you will say yes and some of you will say no the ones that you said say no again I bet you you have and didn't even realize it. You see, Jesus said that if you even look at another man or a woman to lust after them, you've committed adultery in your heart already. So if you just look at them and lust after them, you committed adultery. So, so, so that probably just changed your answer. Okay, yes, I have committed adultery, and you're probably feeling about yay high right now, and I, you know, and I did too. And it's not, you know, not my intentions to make you feel guilty. If you are feeling guilty, that is the Holy Ghost working on you right now. That is the Spirit of God coming over you right now and, and convicting you of these things. Okay, now that being said, is you're, you're probably thinking now, well, how can anybody make it to heaven? How can any one of us make it to heaven now? Because by your own admission, you're, you know, is, uh, if you answered yes to those questions I just asked you, asking, that's just three of the Ten Commandments. That's only three. Uh, and there's still seven more to go. The Bible also says if you've broken one of the commandments, you've broken them all. Okay, so that being said, you know, by your own admission, if you answer, you answer those, those three questions that I just brought up, uh, yes to all of them, by your own admission, you're a lying, thieving, uh, lying, adulterous thief. So all three of those, you still think you can make it in heaven? You're probably thinking, well, how do I make it in heaven? That's the beauty of Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus said, "All have sinned and fallen." Or in the book of Romans, it says, "All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God." The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God through Jesus Christ is eternal life. So, so you know, he that professes Christ and you know, in, in, you know, professes, you know, believes in his heart and confesses with the mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and, uh, and died on the cross for our sins and raised from the dead on the third day, shall be saved. So, think about that. Now, if you want to, if you answer any of these questions and you're feeling bad about that, and you want to get that sin off your back. You see, Jesus came to give us a brand new slate, and when you accept Christ, you just stepped into that army that I was talking about earlier. How would you like to have the power and the strength and the faith to stand up against sin, against Satan, and uh, and have him not touch you? Well, how how do you do that? You do that through through Jesus Christ. You accept Christ in your heart. You, you and the next step would be to go get baptized with water and. And then have somebody lay hands on you, or some some people get it without that, and, and receive the Holy the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which is receiving the Holy Ghost. Okay, so that's <clears throat> so that's 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 very really said. Now, if you want to do these things, feel free to call me. I'll have all my information at the in, at the bottom of this video in the in the box below the in, in the inf information box below. Um, so just feel free to call me if you need prayer for anything. Feel free to call us, talk to me or my wife. But bottom line, people, we need to build an army. Now, who's with me out there? Who's with me on building this army for Jesus? I need some good men and women out there that's willing to stand up for Jesus, like I do. And 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 I'll, I'll help train them. I've got other people that can help train them. I, I attend. Uh, I've been attending uh, the uh, the the first assembly of. Uh, 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 I'm sorry. The first United Pentecostal Church in Pleasant Hill, uh, past couple of weeks, and, they, and it's a really good church from what I've seen so far. Then we pretty much see eye to eye on both things over there. So, so, you know, so yeah. It's, and I mean, plus I have my own ministry, Camp Farm Ministry. So feel free to call. Uh, feel free to get us hold, get a hold of us in any way you see fit. You know, through the information I'm about to put at the bottom of this video. And with that being said, we'll close with some prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this day. Lord, I just want to pray that you just help me to build this army for you, Jesus. It's time, Lord, to stand up and stand strong for you in these days, Lord, in these, in these perilous times that we're coming up on, Lord. We ask that you, I just ask that you just give me strength, boldness, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, 
Lord, and to, and and to love and to, to to do such things, Lord. Help me to love others the way you love me, Lord. And Lord, I just want to pray that you just. I just want to pray for each and every person out there that's in need of anything, Lord. That you just help them with their needs, Lord. Lord, and those that those that are struggling, Lord, help them with their struggles, Lord. Those that want to stand and fight for you, Lord, give them the strength and the courage to do it, Lord. Give them boldness, Lord, to stand and pray for you. And I come against every demonic influence right now in the name of Jesus that tries to stop me from building this army. And I come against the demonic influences that tries to stop and that tries to stop others from helping. And right now I come against I come against all the demonic forces of the New World Order and and uh, and the and the that's going to be that's going to be in, in, in power on during the tribulation. I come against it right now, and I command them I command them all to, to 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 flee from me right now in the name of Jesus and from those around me right now in Jesus' name. Satan, you have no power over me. You have no power over the people I talk to. You have no power over my family or my kids. You gotta even take your hands off of, off of our kids in the United States right now in Jesus' name. And I thank you for all that you've done, Lord Jesus. Thank you for for being God, Lord. Thank you for meeting the needs that we have, and thank you for the future needs you're gonna meet for us in Jesus' name. I pray. And I just want to lift up those that are watching out there, Lord, that that these videos touch them in a mighty way, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen.